So this work ranges from maybe 1970 to about 2000. And you can begin to see how members come and go from the group. And so this show kind of shows how the, uh, this gallery kind of shows how the aesthetic, the uh, color, and some of the concepts began to shift during that period. When we go to the other gallery, uh, Africa Over Now, we're looking at work in the last 10 years, and Moyo Okediji from Nigeria and Kevin Cole from Atlanta became our youngest members. I was the youngest member for a long time, but now they're younger, and they bring a new energy and vitality and some new concepts. When you look at Africa Over, they were like the Black Panthers of the art movement. They said, forget abstract expressionists, forget this, forget that. I want to do my own thing. When you look at the work, it speaks to the, the I, I call it the signs of the times. What was happening back then? What was the African Americans, uh, how they were being featured, you know? Wasn't a lot of positive image. And when you go in, in, into the Africa over now, it's like, a, it's like another history lesson of the signs of the times. When you look at a lot of the newer works that's being created by myself and, uh, and a few other, and the, and, and, and the other brothers, we maintain that relevance to time, how we fit in. And that's what Africa is about. Members like Wadsworth Gerald, who no longer are within the group, you can see how their work evolved over time to some extent. And then when the new members come in, in Africa over now, there's a shift toward more abstraction and more conceptual work than you find in the early part of Africa over. So the colors move from those very bright but very simple Kool-Aid colors to uh, a more complicated palette. You begin to have uh, international references, um, you begin to have more jazz references and influences in the structures of the work. So I would like to suggest that you start with a blues aesthetic and evolve to a jazz aesthetic. And if you think of a jazz combo, the soloists often have a dialogue playing off one another. And there's a, an aesthetic version of that going on here visually. What does color sounds like? Does it shout at you sometimes? It's about, it's about the cacophony of sound. How you paint color, how you paint, how you paint sound, it's shouting at you. It may be rap, it may be jazz, you know, it may be, it may be R&B or even gospel. It tells, it tells a story, but it tells a positive story of African Americans, which is, which is not seen a lot. But at the same time, they, they were doing it a long time ago. What's important is that we address African, African American, African diasporic culture. We're not addressing the racial antagonism that many artists address uh, because that is a dialogue and a conversation that speaks to power, to, you know, all of that. We're speaking to people within the community rather than squeezing into the canon. Our approach is more like let's make the canon more elastic so that it includes what we do and who we are. And I think that's important um, because when you look at a lot of the artists today, a lot of them are talking about race and critiquing race and all of that. And that's a different dialogue than when you talk about, you know, uh, grandma going to church. <laughs> if you don't know who, where you come from, then you don't know where you should be. And, and I've been teaching almost 31 years in the public school system at high school. And I'm one of the few, everybody is, they teach at a university. I chose to teach at a high school. So it is so important for me to educate them to talk about the past and, and show them how to get there and look at the future.